Okay. So safeguarding your website, smart WordPress security. Let's talk about it. Now, I'm curious because before we get into it, it's very important that I understand where we all are as a group um, at our WordPress level. So we don't all have to speak at once, but I would appreciate it if you would add in the chat, what is your WordPress level? Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate user? Are you an advanced user? Because that'll let me know how do I tailor the conversation and make sure that we are all talking about the most important WordPress security measures. So we have Rick, a bit of a beginner. Okay. Elizabeth, beginner as well. And I'm assuming when we say beginner, we're talking about like just started on using WordPress or about one to two years in that kind of a beginner. I'm assuming that sometimes it does take a little bit of, a little bit of time to get used to. You know, WordPress is a very complex system. And that's the reason why this is important as far as security wise, because you definitely want your website, all that hard work you put in, you want to make sure website, your website is secure. Okay. Okay. Karen, the beginner first year. Is it Lance is a middle. Is it Ellis a year in? Okay. Okay. So we're, we got a lot of people here, if not most that are of a year or so in. First of all, I'm asking that question because I want to reassure you, right? And really get rid of the whole myth. If you don't already know that WordPress isn't secure. Um, there's a lot of people out there, especially competitors that try to say WordPress is hacker prone and it isn't secure and it, it can, and that's just not true. There are many things that we're going to talk about today that make your website more secure but WordPress itself is a very secure content management system. So I just want to move that whole mess out the way. We're going to move it to the side so that way we can get the myth over and done with. WordPress is secure. However, there are things that can happen. There are ways that you can be compromised, right? That you can avoid by using some of these strategies and tactics that we're going to talk about today. So the first and one of the most important, I would say, uh, factors in your WordPress vulnerability is going to be, and again, this is not an exhaustive direct list, right? I put it in some type of sequential order. However, depending on your situation and everybody's perspective, your, or your list of priority may differ. But the reason why I'm adding plugins as one of the number one ways how people like a kid in the candy store, right? For those of us who got kids or that was a kid, I believe everybody here should have been a kid. But yeah, for those of us who have been a kid at some point in time, and we had a time, there was a time where we had an overabundance. And if we had too much, we didn't know what to do with it. So we tried to pick everything. I, I want that, the marshmallows and the gumdrops and the Snickers and the chocolate doodles and everything in the world. I want it all. <laughs> and next thing you know, we are causing our parents way more dentistry bills than necessary. That is WordPress. And that's how a lot of us are when it comes to WordPress. If you aren't careful on the type of plugins that you use, especially when you're picking a lot of plugins, you have more opportunities for vulnerabilities because just like other areas in WordPress, hackers can attack plugins, especially when they're outdated. So be careful on the plugins that you use. Make sure they're from a credible source. Make sure they're from a company, a dev team, a development team that cares about their code, that cares about their software and their team, and will put that the time and effort into the plugin. So that's why I'm starting with plugins, because most of us don't use WordPress without plugins. And most of us, I would say, use plugins that sometimes we don't even really know too much about. We just know what it does. And so we just add it to our website. So be careful with plugins. That's a huge security factor because it, you're, you're adding multiple vulnerability aspects to your website. Similar to plugins, you have themes that can be compromised, right? Through uh, hacks or through some type of breach. It's a very similar concept to plugins. The difference between the two and its most simplistic form 
is you're not going to have multiple themes on your website. You know, you'll even if you have a child theme, which is a sub theme of a main theme, even when you have that happen, you're not going to have a whole bunch of other activated themes. You may have a backup theme on your website, which is a good practice to have, but you're not going to have multiple active themes where you'll have multiple active plugins. However, just like when it comes to plugins, you definitely want to make sure you definitely want to make sure that you are using a plugin that is credible. Okay, it is credible. And this is important. This is an example of the reason why I'm saying this. If you go to the WordPress repo or the theme repo, and you go to popular themes, you'll be able to see the most popular themes. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people here that have their favorite theme. So whatever, if you have a theme that you feel like is the go-to theme, it's your top dog, top notch theme, put it in the chat. Please share that theme that you just love and you think is a really good theme. One of my favorite themes is this theme called Cadence. I'm a big fan of that. I've also used Astra. It's a really good theme as well. And they're backed by a really good company. So I really feel secure when it comes to my website because I'm working with a theme that is backed by a team that actually cares. Again, I'm not saying that things can't be penetrated, they can't be compromised, or they can't be hacked into, but you have chances of that less likely happening if you are using with a team that knows what they're doing and that stays on top of things. Like cherry on top of the cake. Now here's an example of a theme being attacked. This was a while ago in January and it was Access Press and it was over 90 WordPress themes and plugins. And this is not the first time this has happened. This was just a big deal at that time, but they were hacked. And it's one of those things where you got to let your users know, you got to let people know, you got to let them know why you have to then go into precautions of how to prevent it. Then you have to earn your trust back from the users, et cetera, et cetera. The people that were attacked or had been compromised? Do they have to, do they get compensated? Just what, what happens when all those situations happen? So that's why it's something that you want to really think about. And I don't think people think about that enough when it comes to the website, the importance of having their theme, just as much as their plugins, maintained from a credible source. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but we'll definitely get to everything as much as possible at the end. Let's see. And if you haven't used WordPress, I'm going to assume most people in here have used WordPress. So I wasn't going to show too much, but just in case, if you go to the plugins, you can see here in the plugins repository that you can literally just go here and add or click the, the word popular. And then you can see the most popular plugins. Now, don't let things fool you because this is what's crazy. And I know somebody here in this session and speak your mind, speak your peace if that's how you feel. But Yoast is one of those ones where it's so popular, they have a cult following, but they did get in trouble. They did get a hacked they, or they had a vulnerability issue and they didn't tell their users for a very long time. And they lost a lot of trust when that happened. And they're very popular plugin. You can see 5 million activations strong and their SEO plugin. So it's just one of those things where you have to pay attention. You got to pay attention or you have to work with people that are paying attention because if you're a busy business owner or freelancer, blogger, content creator, and you're not paying attention or working with somebody who's paying attention, you you may have something like Leos happened and you're finding out an email months later that your website can potentially be compromised from a ma major company. It happens. Let me get back. All right. So updates is the next thing that I want to talk about when it comes to your plugins. WordPress has different versions and one of the latest major versions of WordPress, not anytime like recent within the last few months, but I think it was about a year ago, had a major update when it came to enabling auto updates. And that was huge because a lot of people were enabling auto updates from other plugins or other hosting functionalities, but now you can do it directly inside of WordPress. And this is one of those things as well that you want to be careful with. Not all updates are created equally. Not all auto updates are created equally. Well, what do I mean by that? Sometimes you can have an auto update turned on and it updates your website from a major update from a plugin that didn't test out all the bugs in the plugin before they've had this major update. 
So now while you're at home or you're at work or you're out exercising or you're having some fun, having dinner or something like that, and then you get home and then you notice that your website is broken. You get that phone call. You get that message that your website's broke. How did it break? What happened? Did I get hacked? Did I... No, not really. Updated your website and the bugs weren't fixed yet in the plugin. Auto updated. So it happens. It's not often, but it does happen. And that's why I'm giving you this little tip right here. Not saying I don't want you to auto update your plugins. I do. It's a best practice, but just be aware and understand that it can also do some damage if you're not paying attention. But if you don't update your plugins, once again, you are susceptible for being vulnerable to hacking. And then this is just another image right here of what it looks like for those who haven't seen the back end of WordPress, when it comes to the updates, you can just toggle everything and then update if you want to do it manually. If you have your auto updates on, you're going to see this little message here that says auto automatic updates scheduled in X amount of hours. Yeah. Auto updates is one of those tricky things where you definitely want to have it. You want to be able to utilize it, have it. The more plugins you have, you especially want to have it, but then the more plugins you have and the more, I don't want to say lazy, but if you're not paying attention to things and just seeing the update patterns, like seeing, okay, when you're using these plugins and you've had auto updates on for a week, a month, six months, have you had any issues yet? If you've had any issues, turn that sucker off, turn that joint all the way off. If not, okay, leave it on. But you just gotta, you just gotta be mindful. You just gotta be mindful. WordPress websites are upkeep. Let me try to check out. I don't think there's anything. Just, I'm just checking the chat real quick. It works well with other plugins, not cause Yeah, that's true. Like I use look, yes, look, I want to change to a different plugin. Can I do that? That's fucking not a good. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep, thank you, Eric. You definitely can, you know, change to whatever plugin, especially the fact that they have the import settings now. One of my favorite SEO plugins is called Rank Math, and it has a migration setting to come from Yoast specifically. Okay, um, and this is what it looks like when it comes to the updates from the core version of WordPress. So I was talking to you about using the updates when it came to the plugins and the theme, but WordPress itself, as I just mentioned, it does have core updates. So you want to be checking those. You can also turn those to auto updates. If you enable the auto updates for your WordPress core updates, those updates are very important. I will say that's because that's the actual core. That's WordPress itself. It has nothing to do with your plugins. It's WordPress yourself. So you got to think when you think about WordPress, there's a couple of layers to it. And I'm going to get to the next one here in a second. But you have WordPress like the core and then you have WordPress, the plugins, that technology sector right there. And then I'm going to share with you another technology side. But again, think of WordPress, the core, the, the platform. Then you got to think about the plugins that you connect to the platform. So think about them separately, not as one thing, even though they work as one system. Passwords. Uh, this should be pretty much common sense, I would assume, for most of us in here. I think most of us, if not all of us in here, are pretty, pretty darn intelligent. And I believe most of us, if not all of us, understand the importance of passwords. But it's just something that needs to be said as well for someone who does just need a quick reminder. Like, dang, I forgot I got to change 2023. I got to update my password. I got to change things. I'm doing these things. And I'll admit I'm one of those people. I'm, I am. So you can boo me. Or excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, because I, I got to update my password. Sometimes I use the same password in certain situations. And that's not a good practice to have. My passwords are always very hard though. But at the same time, it's like when you have 100 plus different logins, I would recommend for those of you all who are using a lot of logins to use a password manager instead of saving the passwords to your browser. I know we get into the habit of that, but make sure that you are using a password that has capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters because passwords are one of the easiest ways to get hacked, get your website hacked, especially if you're just keeping it very simple. And we do, we get, even though we know the common factor of it, we just get lackadaisical with things as people sometimes. And that's normal, that's natural. But I just wanted to remind you, you wanna use strong passwords. It is a security factor. Now, going to that third part of 
how I'm trying to get you to think about WordPress in a way, right? When we're compartmentalizing it. I mentioned WordPress core, WordPress plugins. Now let's talk about the WordPress hosting. And you can say chicken or the egg scenario, right? Which one came first? Which one's more important first? I wanted to start with WordPress at first intentionally because I just know people get very excited when it comes to those plugins because they have you create the functionality in the website of your dreams, right? Hosting is a little bit more like, okay, why do I care about hosting? What do I need hosting for? Until you realize your website is really slow. Then you're like, oh, but hosting, I would say is very important factor. You want to use secure hosting um, and you want to make sure that your hosting has a firewall or application firewall, good backups, and some type of malware or site scanning. These are some hosting examples here. For anybody that has a host that they do love, or please put it in the chat. I just wanted to give some examples of some really good hosts that have these factors involved, and they are pretty fast. I always advise people, do not go cheap on hosting. You will pay for it later. I promise you. Yeah, grid pain is a good one as well. So here's another, we'll say, wah, wah, wah moment, right? Or we call it boo moment. So GoDaddy got breached themselves as well. And this is no knock on GoDaddy, but I wish I had my knock, my knock sound. But at the same time, I'm not a fan of GoDaddy because they just, they try to do too much. They just try to do too much. Either way, they got hacked. This was recent. This was not like a long time ago. And again, they pulled the situation where they failed to let people know they, or they took too long. For whatever reason, it is what it is. But a lot of people, sites were compromised because of this. And I always advise people not to go with GoDaddy for hosting anyway. If you want to buy your domains there, fine. But you don't want to buy land or hosting or a trip to the moon with GoDaddy because you that's a no daddy. You never know what you're going to get with them. Uh, but it happens even with hosting. So hosting is one of those huge aspects of your WordPress website because there's so many technologies involved with it. There's so many complexities involved with it that you don't need to know about. You just need to know it's working and working well on your behalf. So again, pick your hosting wisely. Do not go with cheap hosting or because they're doing some grand oh so deal. And when you look at their reputation, it's a little if. It's a little iffy on the sideline. So with this really good secure web hosting, we want to think about, as I mentioned, our firewall. You want to think about backups and scanning. I use SiteGround as an example for hosting, but whatever hosting you use, most hosts have very similar features, even if they have a kind of a different backend user, user interface. Like some hosting are still using cPanel, right? It's a type of user interface for hosting. And some hostings are using their own interface. So for instance, when you use SiteGround, you're going to see something different than you would see when people are using cPanel. So I'm back here in SiteGround, as you can see it in my hosting. And if I go to security, you can see here that I have backups on the hosting side. And that's not the same thing as backups on your website side. So this is backups on what they call the server side backups, where my server, my hosting is backing the site up. But if my hosting goes down, I don't have access to those backups. So you got to keep that in mind. Hosting goes down. I don't have access to those backups. So backups is a great security measure. It has a firewall as well. I don't think I can get to it from back here, but I know in particular that it has a web application firewall. The, I haven't gotten to that part yet, but I was going to get to it. Site scanner. It has a site scanner here for them. They make you for the, they do a free site scan. And then for a premium, they have that. Depending on what type of hosting you use, it just depends. But as long as you get your site scanned for malware, so you at least know what's happening. That's pretty much very important, at least fundamentally when it comes to most hosts. So like I mentioned, backups on the server side. Now let's talk about backups on the website side. So if I type in backups back here, and WordPress, you choose your backup preference. Pick your poison, people, whatever you feel comfortable with, right? But just make sure that you have double the trouble, double the fun. It's all great with double mint gum. Make sure you have backups because if you have double backups, backup on the server side, backup on the website side, if the server goes down, your hosting goes down, 
you still have a backup backing up to, let's say, Google Drive or Dropbox or Amazon. Um, and vice versa, say your Amazon goes down or your Google Drive or your Dropbox goes down for whatever reason, or there's a malfunction or just an error in the backup, you will have your hosting to revert back to if something goes wrong. That is one of the best game plans you're going to have when it comes to being attacked, especially when it cannot be fixed, when the problem can't be fixed, or you just don't have the resources to afford to fix the problem. So it can be fixed, but you can't afford to fix it. Then just go back to a certain point in time. So do daily backups at minimum, 12 hours. If you have certain type of websites that are changing constantly, you may want to do hour by hour or every four hours. But backing up on your server and backing up on the website itself, I'm trying to tell y'all, it saves your life. I just had it happen to me twice when I up, updated the plugin too fast. And we ended up having to revert to a backup because we couldn't change the website from there. It was a situation where it just couldn't be fixed. So we had to go back to a backup, which luckily we didn't make too many changes before that backup happened, that late, latest backup. So it wasn't a big deal. Make a couple of adjustments, but if it wasn't for that backup in, in place, y'all, I would have been messed up. And I'm talking about this just happened last week. So just letting y'all know, this is real. It gets real out here. A secure website address. So using a secure website address like SSL, using an SSL certificate, so that way you can get your HTTPS. And depending on your situation, okay, this is going to be different for everybody, right? So I'm just going to give you these different angles here. But depending on your situation, you can get an SSL in your hosting. Your hosting can do it for free. Usually they use what's called Let's Encrypt. Or you can use a plugin on the website itself. So you can do it with the hosting server side or you can do it with the plugin. You choose which direction that you want to go. Just make sure you have that sucker in place, okay? Have that SSL in place. You want to have that lock on your URL. You want to have that lock here in the browser. That means your website is secure. That is a huge protection factor. So make sure that you have that SSL, okay? And it's for free. And it can auto-update and renew. I think it's every three months that it renews. It's just one of those things where you just set it and forget it. You don't even have to worry about it no more. You don't even need to know the, the nerdness behind why it's working or how it's working, where it came from, where it's going in 2,000 years from now. Just know you can set it up and let it go with the wind. This is a classic movie, by the way. Now, using a security plugin. This is something that I think that we typically already, for the most part, know about, but Here's some things I want you to think about when using your security, using a security plugin. And this is where things get a little sticky because there are so many variables when it comes to different security protocols and factors, settings and things you can set up to make your website even more secure. Literally like dozens of dozens, if not hundreds. Man, if y'all are lucky that I don't have my sounds for the people who've been here a couple of times, because my Rodecaster, my audio unit reset itself. And I used to have all these sounds, just these clips ready to go, ready to drop. And they were just pretty funny. I used to crack people up. But my ain't nobody got time for that. Like, I missed that lady because I would just hit her now. Ain't nobody got time for that? Because we ain't got time for that. We don't have time to be doing all of this security stuff. And no, that's why I'm like, let me just give you all the nuts and the bolts. You can do the rest of your research and move on with your day. But these things are the most important things right here when it comes to your security plugin. So login limits, you want to think about login limits. I'm going to share with you, show with you what that means. Like basically limiting the amount of times a person can log in, disabling file editing, two-factor authentication, brute force, site scans. Uh, for some security plugins have site scans and then some security plugins have firewalls and some don't. So all security plugins aren't created equal. And that's why I'm saying I want you to think about what I'm about to show you because it's something that it took me a while to understand and figure out. And I think that it can give you a head start in like your security strategy, which direction you want to go. So for instance, if we go back here and I go back to the install plugins, I did a little bit of preliminary, y'all. I did a little preliminary. Meaning like I put the plugins on, so that's why they're already here. But 
This is a practice that I would never advise somebody to do. You don't want to put four security plugins on your website. That ain't something that you, you want to do. You only need one. Starts with one. Shout out to Linkin Park. I think security, site ground security, and WordPress security are the ones that we're going to look at today as examples of not all security plugins are created equally, but these are some very good and popular security plugins. Okay. Give these plugins a round of applause. So depending on what security plugin you want to go with and the direction you want to go, your settings are going to vary, but I wanted to share with you um, kind of some differences between these plugins. The plugin, security plugin that I use currently, and it's mainly because I already use their hosting, is SiteGround Security. So I'm going to activate this first and then give you a little small tour behind it. A little small tour to all around the world. So in SiteGround Security, we have two kind of main menus here I'm going to talk about. We have your site security and then your login security. What I like about this plugin is it's very simple. It's lightweight, it's simple, it gets to the point when it comes to security practices. As I mentioned in our, I'll go back here to our slide deck, limits login attempts. So we have that down, oh, nope, sorry, that's in the login one. So while I'm here though, I'm gonna go with disable file editing. So themes and plugins editor, this is what disable file editing is going to be here using this security plugin. The limit login attempt is going to be in the login security settings right here at the bottom, limit login attempts. So again, you're just limiting the amount of times a person gets to try to log into the website, because if they're logging in past a certain amount of times, that can indicate that this is not a normal user. So you just want to be about that. Here we are, we have two-factor authentication as well too, which is right here. And you can toggle this on and then go through the process of enabling two-factor authentication. Like I said, this plugin is pretty, pretty simple. When it comes to this plugin in particularly, it does not have firewall and it does not have a site scanning. Now, why is that? The main reason why is because SiteGround security plugin is backed by a hosting company, SiteGround, and they already have firewall and the site scanning on their hosting side. So, hey, we're not going to give a free plugin these features too when we have it with our hosting. So keep that in mind. That's one thing that if you do have hosting that has firewall and scanning already, this may work for you in your situation, even though it's not with SiteGround, right? It's a different hosting company. It still can apply because you can use this with any hosting at all, any hosting that you would like. Just make sure your hosting has firewall and security. So I hope that makes sense, but I just wanted to give you some insight on that part. Other than that, these other like things that will apply, log and post hack actions, meaning what happens after the website gets hacked is very important. Most security plugins, the other ones I'm going to show you, have these settings as well too. So I'm going to deactivate that one and go to iThemes next, just so you can see the common denominators. Because I think people get really tripped up with security plugins iThemes is one of my favorite ones. It's one that I use with my clients. And I also use this when I'm not using like a site ground website. I use iThemes because it's really good. And I like the iThemes interface. I'm a big fan of not just the functionality of a plugin or an app, which is very important and priority, but how does it, how does it, I'm not a person who likes to go off of feelings, okay? But how does it make me feel in a way of motivated to actually be using it inside it because some plugins are boring, right? So I'm a big fan of going for either, we'll say profit over preference, if that makes sense, when it comes to business sustainability and going with what does the data tell me? What are the stats tell me? What are the facts tell me? What is the information telling me? And then let me make a logical decision from there. So that's why I'm saying like, don't let the aesthetics make have you make your choice of why you use a certain security plugin but when you have the best of both worlds it feels like a win-win right you got the functions the features and then you have the aesthetics that look clean but look look polished i would say ah, polished or polished however you want to say it tomato tomato but when it comes to features in i theme security we have enforcing an ssl which is not on the list here but it's something that we just mentioned before when it came to the ssl adding that to your website. So enforcing that with a security plugin is just extra measures right there. This is something too that's very important. Doesn't come with the site ground security plugin, which is brute force. That is, is huge. So we have brute force here. 
that doesn't come with the site ground security. It's okay. I got to give and I got to take when it comes to my security plugins, when it, when I have to think about the pros and the cons. But we do have site scan scheduling. So this security plugin has site scanning. So SiteGround's plugin didn't have that. iThemes does. So it's something that you want to think about. They both have two-factor authentication. And then there's other security factors as well, including notifications and configurations. But that's the gist. And this does a lot of the job, folks. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to do much if you have really good hosting and you have a very credible security plugin. You just got to realize what features are coming from your security plugin, what features are coming from your hosting. I'm going to deactivate this. Let's go with security. And then we're going to go at WordFence. And then we're going to close. We're going to get ready to close it out and put on, do some Q&A. So security. Now, this is something that I had to learn because I'm not going to I'm not going to portray like I'm some security expert because I'm not. I know enough security practices. I manage a lot of websites, but I, I am not a WordPress developer. So there's only so much I'm going to know, right, when it comes to security. I'm pretty much like a lot of people in here when it comes to just security. I just want to get in and get out. But I want my stuff secure. And I just learned you know, when it came to these different security plugins that, yeah, there is some main differences between, between them and having that or with that being said, you really do have to pay attention and think, do you want an extra layer of something that you may or may not be getting from your hosting? The one example is firewall. So I haven't talked about firewall yet when it came to site ground security. I haven't talked about an application firewall, web application firewall when it came to iThemes. You can see security has one and they're big on that. They want you to connect to their system so they can give you some more protection. So you do that with an API key. I believe it's free as, as far as I know. But once you get your API key, I'm sure you sign up for one for free with your email, you add it in here. Now you have fire, a firewall helping secure your website as well, give you a really huge extra layer of protection when it comes to malware infections and reinfections. And like I said, you don't get that with SiteGround, you don't get that with iThemes. iThemes Pro may give you that, but it may not. And when it comes to the security, it doesn't, they don't give you a lot of settings like iThemes gives you and SiteGround gives you for the most part, but they do give you other security settings that we haven't talked about, like hardening. That's one, some security settings that they give you. Post hack, we said, we talked about that with iThemes and with SiteGround, scanner, like iThemes as well, and alerts. So how they communicate with you when something does happen, it's, that's important as well too. And then let me deactivate this and activate WordFence. I think I saw somebody in the chat say that they did use WordFence. I'm not mistaken, but I'll double check in here in a second. And then you got WordFence. Now, WordFence, I haven't activated. So if you do use WordFence, please let me know what your favorite feature of WordFence is. Another reason why I didn't have it activated was because they wanted you to go through signing up for a license. So that was interesting that WordFence wants a license, security wants an API, iThemes, you can just do it for free, go through their setup and then SiteGround for free as well. But with WordFence, you do get a firewall for free. So these are just things that you definitely want to think about when it comes to your security plugin, because you don't want more than one. And last but not least, when it comes to at least this, we'll say beginner to intermediate security best practices and factors. We ain't going too deep on the deep end now when it comes to advanced security practices. But this is the last thing that I want to let you know that is a huge security practice if you need it and using a content delivery network such as Cloudflare. Cloudflare has a web application, has firewall as well too, firewall rules, as well as other security features and it's more than just a content delivery network, meaning it, it does more than just serve your website across the world uh, faster than if you weren't using it, right? But it also secures your website from threats and attacks, from special threats and attacks that your security plugin is not going to do or your hosting isn't going to do. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully everybody got a little bit of value out of this presentation. City Wall.